I'm totally not panicking, and today we're going to be talking about pallid flesh. Like this cutie, right here. Hi, buddy. Alright, so you want a model, nice fleshy model, like the one I've got here. I hand sculpted it. You don't have to go for anything hand sculpted. You're going to want some acrylic colors on a wet palette. It doesn't have to be on a wet palette. I have a wet palette around, so I use that. Uh, I think it's actually, those are actually gauche colors. Gauche colors and paintbrushes, like I just showed you there. All right, so we start from. Uh, I like to work from the shadows. So we've got um, so a nice like a darker a darker color there in the shadows. That brown, it's a burnt umber. Uh, we're just gonna sort of work that into all of the areas that are gonna be shaded. You want to work from your your sort of like I don't even want to, but you know I work from my from my darker colors to my lighter colors. A really thick application. Uh, you want a lot of water in there, uh, and then I'm moving into orange, which is like the the value shade up from brown. You know, it's a the orange is just a brown with some red in it, uh, or more red in it, I guess, since it already has some red in it. And now I'm getting that really nice pale tone. I'm mixing that on my palette, which is something that I tend to do. Um, that's uh, I think that's like a pink. I don't I'm not sure if it's a it's a red, so it's like a red mixed with a lot of white, essentially, and uh, you're just gonna uh, punch that right uh, straight onto the model, nice and nice, real wet. Uh, it's just gonna flow sort of really easily onto the model. I'm adding in some blue uh, to make it a little cooler up top here, more in the more in the shadows. You can see I'm just hitting the, uh, the high surfaces there, and uh, it blends right into the wet paint that I've got already. The video shot out like. Uh, it's like 200% speed, so it's it's twice as fast as I'd normally be going. Uh, so it looks it looks pretty fast, but I'm moving pretty fast here in the first place. And again, you're just sort of uh, you're playing with value. You want to punch everything. Uh, you're going to keep it really bright in this stage because you're going to go over it with a bunch of oil paint, which is going to uh, going to dull it down. And you want all of your uh, high value stuff to be where you want the, the focus to be. And so for me, that's obviously on the face, on the belly, that arm a little bit, the one that's gripping his belly. Uh, and then everything else is just going to kind of stay a little bit lower down in the value. So you're going to see it read as you look at the model. Like at the end of the day, you're going to see it from the from the top, you know, like from the, from the face. And that's like the most important thing. And so, you know, right now what we're doing is we're just taking that acrylic paint and uh, I think it's gauche, gauche, uh, and we're we're blending it, just wet blending it. Uh, the wet we're pulling it from from like the browns, like into the into the mid into the mid tones there. Um, just kind of roughly adding it in, and and that's the end of that stage. So we're gonna just set it down, wait for it to dry, take about twenty minutes, and pick it up, and that's what it looks like when it's dry. So it's got it's got some good it's got some good like tonation to it you know like you can see you can see pretty clearly where the shadows are now uh, where the where the light is you can see it's probably a little bit lighter than it needs to be we're gonna fix that with the Zorn palette here so these are all oils ivory black yellow ochre titanium white uh, cad red uh, so those are gonna be those are gonna be on there and then I'm uh, I'm cheating my Zorn palette a little bit today I've got a uh, burnt umber. Um, a sap green, which is like a green with some, or like a yellow and blue, and then a purple, which is a which is a yellow and a blue, so like a proper blue. I've got this like wax paper palette uh, that I've sort of pre-cut, so I'm just gonna take a little piece of this wax paper palette. The most important thing is that it's not a porous surface, so you don't want like paper. Uh, I got my blue my blue shop towel there, um, and then uh, these mineral spirits here, which basically, if you've never used oil paints before, mineral spirits are. Uh, they're lights like water uh, for your oil paint in your cute little jar that you can put your mineral spirits in. I like to have a jar so you can close it and uh, and like set it aside because you can use this stuff uh, over and over again. The oil paint will just settle at the bottom and you'll get nice clear uh, mineral spirits at the top after you're done using it. Um, and also mineral spirits can be kind of expensive. Uh, I've got this helpful coaster that I put on there that I'm going to use to store the mineral spirits. And then this is an alternative palette. As you can see I've used it before. It's just um, it's just a takeout lid. So to set it up, I uh, take the paint straight from the tube and just put it right on the right on the palette there. So that's umber, and this is uh, cad red. The umber, cad red, yellow, and ivory black make perfect flesh tones, sort of like out of the bottle. This guy under Zorn. The 
I don't know if he came up with the palette, but he's known he's known for the palette, and uh, it makes like really wonderful, really wonderful skin tones and uh, traditional oil paintings. And the same is true here. Uh, I'm cheating a little bit and using this really nice, uh, like a sap green that has like an actual blue in it. The blue on the palette here is uh, is that ivory black. It functions as a blue uh, for this. All blacks function as blues. Um, and then we've got this nice, uh, we've got a nice purple as well. And then I'm also using a burnt sienna, this orange. Um, I'm doing all this because I've got the paint around and uh, it saves me time kind of having to mix it up. You could mix it up on your own. Uh, but this is a pretty straightforward approach. You can get all these paints at like a hobby store, or not a hobby store, like an art store for, uh, I don't know, between six and $15 USD. So the oil wash stage, you just dip your brush in that oil paint right there and get it nice and wet and uh, give, your, give your little fatty a bath. So you're doing this to begin to add definition to the model you know you can see that we've got a lot of the colors blocked in but it's uh it's pretty flat um, and so this this oil this oil layer that we're putting over here is going to help uh, just kind of help bring out the definition of the uh, of the model the model itself this oil paint it just really helps uh, bring out the definition uh, that the sculpt has like whatever whatever kind of definition your sculpt has going into it and again, in this stage, I like to work from the the lower value stuff to the higher value stuff. Um, you can see it's still wet here, and I'm bringing this nice this green into the brown, and I'm pulling some of the some of the umber, the brown, away from the away uh, with the green to get like a, a like a really really sloppy, dirty kind of like blend going on. You can see that I've left the top half of the model largely untouched by the brown, largely untouched by the brown. Um, and that's because I'm going to be adding in um, that uh, the purple that we have there. Uh, on top, it's going to give it a real, a real nice sort of like, like bruised appearance when it all, uh, when it all washes away. Uh, as you can see, the model still looks like shit. That's fine. Um, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it might look like shit at the end of it. Who knows? But uh, but yeah, this is the this is the stage where you just sort of cover it in uh, in some in some oil paint, and uh, you, you sort of like get to enjoy the process and try to draw uh, your your different your different sort of sections uh, in together. You can see I'm doing that a little bit here. So go ahead and clean that brush off, and it goes like a number five. It's a synthetic, um, so we're gonna wipe that down. Look at that! Look at it get wiped down. We use that blue shop towel. Uh, it's like a mechanics towel. It's meant for like oil for oil from a car, so it works really great for oil paint as well. It's like super absorbent. I've seen other people like uh, NJ and Marco use cotton swabs or makeup things. I think those are fine too. I've never used one. I assume they're fine. Uh, but I like the I like the blue shop towel. You can get a little bit more, uh, get a little bit more like I don't know like surface area with it, and you can kind of almost paint with the with the oil that's already on there. Uh, we're just gonna come in straight with white to to really to really accent the to really accent the value changes that we're going for here. We'll be uh, blending all of this white in to the to the kind of base colors to that base painting that we put in before that like brownie purpley green that we've got going on, and uh, to do that we take we use some of the we use like a wet brush and then a, and then a, a dry brush to blend it in. You can see I'm just sort of like I'm I'm playing around with the value. You're gonna hear me say value a lot on this, I guess. Uh, by by adding in some yellow to the brown, which would like lighten it up a little bit, and I'm not quite happy with it, and so I push it back with the with the cloth, and then I'm like looking at it again, and uh, I'm not too happy with it, and so I push it back again, and I add some more white in, some maybe mix it up just again straight on the palette, add some purple in there, and uh, we're just gonna go ahead and paint, probably paint over. Yep. Oh, look at that! I paint over the whole thing, and then you get kind of a nice, really sort of. Um, I don't know, good, good kind of like pale color, uneven brush strokes. That's fine. Uh, you know, we're gonna be blending a lot of this in with like another, with like either a blending brush or stippling, as I'm doing here. And you just kind of blast that over the top of your brush strokes, and you can kind of slowly bend, blend in. I'm not sure if you can tell or not, but I'm painting a lot with the side of the brush as well to get good coverage. 
and then you know alternating between these different brushes but to put the paint on you can see here with putting the paint on my nice wet uh, my nice wet brush and then sort of taking it off with the with a dry one here again paint with the painting with the side of the brush to um to pick up the the details on the on the model itself and then you just uh sort of like blend those colors in with that brown with that brown base coat that you've got and that lets you get like a really nice wet blend with these wet paints these wet oil paints and it sort of like helps you build up the build up the transition uh, in that way you can see that the the sort of like upper half is chest still a little bit too dark for his belly so again you're just going to kind of go in with that um that higher value white white paint and uh you know just kind of noodle around unfortunately there's no i mean i'm sure there is you know but i wouldn't know what it is i just like to 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 play around with the with the tone and with the value until i feel like i've got a good sense for what it is you know what you can't see me doing here as i'm working through this is taking a step like sitting back real far back in my chair and and kind of looking at the model from from literally from arm's length and you know seeing if I think it, if it looks good, does it look good? Can you, you, can, you can turn it upside down and see if it looks good that way. There's a lot of different tricks you can do, but you know, really what we're doing right here is after you've got the base, the the sort of like base wash in and you've got that, that nice layer of oil paint on the bottom, you know, then, then you can just kind of come in here and play with values. Having all your paints on the palette here is really beneficial because, um, you know, then you, then you're not, you don't have to, um, you don't have to worry about like putting it on the palette like while you're doing it you just get it all set up in advance here again i'm using some pure white like all the way at the top of the model and this will probably be fairly unmolested this is going to help draw your eye up to the top the higher the value like the more your uh, eyes are drawn i'm going to hit these panels sort of loosely these like fat panels on the back pretty loosely with some white paint and it's going to be again uh, pure white that'll probably uh, blend in or, or stipple in later but you know you know you want that to you know the light is it's going to lightly you know it's largely going to catch at the like at the top and then become more diffuse as um as it as it gets towards the bottom so uh, we're using this it looks like a it looks like it's either a three or a five to kind of do a majority of this work uh, oh, I put a little X on his belly. It made, reminded me of the punch out guy, so had to had to push that back. <laughs> and uh, again, we're just gonna just gonna go back some irregular brush strokes to give a to give a more to give sort of a a, a realistic appearance, I guess. So a loose a loosely realistic appearance. Punching in a little bit of green here down at the bottom, a little bit more rot. You know, it's gonna come up from. From both like the, the the shadows shadows are usually a little bit more green than you anticipate them being a little bit more um a little bit not not quite it's not not black so much usually green dark purple really really dark brown here i'm just pulling all of the all of the excess paint off so i can go again go in once again and kind of add in what i'm looking for here i'm gonna do an ink wash here so as you can see, I get a bunch of, uh, not a bunch, I get a fair amount of uh, paint on the brush and get it really, really runny, and then add that into the spots that I think um, could use a little bit more definition. It's gonna run right into the cracks and really pull all of the stuff forward. So you can see I'm putting it here into sort of like the fat folds, and that brings that really, that like ochery, yellowy, you know, kind of like pustulant color more to the front with that nice high contrast, that sort of like raw red color. I'm also doing it on these little, you can't really tell maybe, but he's got these little like metallic gears on his body. I'm putting it on top of that because those are eventually gonna be orange or maybe brown. Uh, and that red is gonna be a nice base for that to go on. Here I'm pulling the, uh, the ink out with the dry brush. Um, you could let it sit in there um, and just kind of like let it dry naturally, but uh, I, I pulled it out because I wanted to add in a little bit of brown as well. Uh, and that's going to help keep some of the definition and keep some of the nice oil layer that you have from the bottom. And here I'm looking on the face. This is, this is arguably the most important thing a lot of people are going to see. 
If so, I'm adding in a little bit more depth, adding in some brown, adding in some green. Uh, well, I was, now I'm just <laughs> uh, painting these little, these little gears brown, it looks like. Yeah, so adding some, adding some depth and some dimension to that. It's the highest, most highest part on the model. You usually want to work from the most recessed to the most out in front, uh, barring your ink stages. So maybe give a little, little wipe down for his mouth. Gonna do some final white highlights on the face. This is the actual speed um, that, that I paint at um, for the face. So it's it, it it it's it's quick, but you, know, you just want to be mindful. Lay down your lay down your paint and um, really sort of like hit those you know pull pull those pull those edges right up to the front with that white. You'll see that I'm mostly using um, the same paint. Like I haven't, I haven't gone in for more paint yet, you know. So it's just, uh, it's just what I have. Uh, here's, a, here's a clean, and I'm just kind of like moving it, moving it around and touching up the, you know, touching up. I don't know. It's all noodling at a certain point, right? Like this, you know, that doesn't look any better now than it did 30 seconds or two minutes ago. I don't know. Uh, but you have a lot of freedom with oil paint, where you can kind of try stuff out, push it back, and wipe it off, and come in again, and take another look at it. And, you know, maybe this works, and maybe it doesn't. Um, and this seems like eh, not quite happy with it yet. <laughs> See where we go. Uh, so we stipple in a little bit more brown uh, into his belly, and then uh, push it through with a nice dry brush. And this might be the end of it. Looks like I'm vigorously cleaning. Vigorously cleaning. Oh yeah, there we go. So there's my fat wet baby. There he is. He's looking all right. I'm gonna move to some final details. I'm gonna use this uh, dirty down rest that I got uh, from Man Goblins, and what we're doing here is I apply it. Um, I like to shake it up and, get, and take it out of the cap. I put it on the. This is at a normal speed. I um, just add a little bit onto the onto the surface that I want to do it from. And then with just a, a wet brush with none of the rust product on it, I, I draw just a, a small pin-like line down. And you're gonna see me do that uh, quite a bit here <laughs> to give uh, to give like a nice kind of like runny, uh, rusty texture to it. So you can you can see that I go in, I add a little bit of the rust, um, and get it a little bit wet and pull it down. This gives like a nice it gives like a nice streaking color to it. It's a, a fairly intense color or you know, pr product or whatever, so it will show up. It can show up like pretty orange. So I like to I like to really water it down, and I like to take stuff out of the cap uh, because it lets you get just like a really super like minuscule amount. And you can see it dries, and I go in and I uh, give it another give it another shot there. Doing the ones on the base. All right, here we're going for the weapon, which I painted previously. Uh, I just give it a quick coat of the rust at the bottom where all of the rust would sort of naturally collect. And uh, yeah, there it is. The, the oil paint has to be dry before you put the rust on. Uh, <laughs> otherwise you might have a little bit of a bad time. So there he is, there's our, there's our fat pallid baby. Here he goes. So yeah, I'm gonna close it up and then, ooh, this might actually be the most important part. You put him on his little stand here, okie dokie. Take a little picture of him. Yeah, there we go. Turn darkness down a little bit. Snap that photo. Post about it. Got to post about it. So here we go. This is me making the post uh, just before you get the photo. So let people know what you're up to. And uh, you know that the big boys got treats for you. Feels good. Here he is on the uh, on the turntable, looking good, extra gross, with some marines that I did, looking gross, extra gross. Yeah, there it is, big fat disgusting baby, just like me, just like all of us. Thanks. <laughs>